Hello everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm having a great day because I am talking about one of my favorite projects and that is this, the RGB to HDMI. This is a little PCB that you can make yourself. I've got a video showing you how or you can buy it from websites like Retro Hack Shack. But the idea is that you pop this on top of a Raspberry Pi Zero and uh, when you're done, you make a little custom cable or you buy the custom cable and you can take your, let's just say CGA or EGA or pretty much any of the old vintage computers and you can use the HDMI port of the Pi to get just pixel perfect uh, images out of the computer on a modern monitor. I pretty much love everything about the project except for one thing. When it comes time to prototyping these cables, uh, it can be a bit tricky. You have to take the whole thing apart. You don't have a lot of room in here. Uh, you have to use this kind of ribbon interface to make a cable. And if it doesn't work, you just keep trying over and over and over again until you get it right. So a couple of months ago, I came up with this. This is the RGB to HDMI prototyping board. Um, and the idea is that you take the entire thing and you put it on here and instead of running this cable to this you run the cable to this um, looking something like this and that gives you the option to um, do all kinds of prototyping so instead of having to hand wire a cable like this or hand crimp a cable like this let's say you've got some funky din connector on your old atari computer you can cut the uh, end off of an old cable and you can wire in all right i need to go to pins one three and seven and you're good to go um or maybe once you've done that you decide all right now that i've got my ribbon cable set up i want to just stick the ribbon cable straight to the board so i don't have to mess with these things and so the idea with this is that this is meant to be extremely flexible the one thing a lot of people missed on the first video is that in general these rgb to hdmi boards get set up one of two ways and you don't tend to change between them you either set them up as digital or analog depending on the kind of computer you're using and so in the case of digital you'd be using these uh 12 pins here possibly these 12 pins here this this you know this side of the board basically but if you're using some of the other computers like let's just say an old trs80 model one and you want to be in analog mode then you would use this side of the board and so you don't actually have to populate any of the board that you don't want you just populate the part that you want and you are good to go and i love this thing and i've got a bunch of them around here i've got this one dedicated for the trs 80 model 3 and 4 and you notice i didn't put these connectors here because i don't need them um you can see it's got some cat hair on there and then this one again is set up for full prototyping and just different versions of this board get set up for different things and that's the great thing about the sponsor of this video pcb way Thanks to PCBWay, I can order 10 of these boards for five bucks and get them shipped to my door for a couple more dollars. And then when all said and done, I can configure each board exactly how I want because they're next to free. And so for one set of computers, I might configure it one way, another set of computers, I configure it a different way. And thanks to PCB ways, you can see here, I have a version 1.1. I was able to iterate on this thing. And you know, if you don't like the way you did it the first time, you go ahead and make another version of it. And you make another version, make another version, because you can have them to your door in about a week. And I want to thank PCB way for sponsoring this video and for keeping the maker community afloat. And speaking of iteration, uh, I'm excited to tell you about this one. I got to thinking, you know, I've made a bunch of these little RGB to HDMI boards and I thought, you know what, why should you have to have three boards to do this project when you can have two? And so I took the entire RGB to HDMI project and I put it on this board. And the other thing I did was that I got rid of most of the surface mount components. So where the only thing in the surface mount on this board is uh, this Xilinx chip here, the CPLD. And so with this thing, let me tell you about this. So a couple things that are really awesome. Thing number one is that if you don't wanna make this board, you don't have to. This thing works exactly like the old one. Let's say you've got an RGB to HDMI and you've got your Raspberry Pi. You can just sit there and mount them exactly as you did on the old one, run your cable right to here, and this thing will work. So maybe you've got two or three of these laying around you made after my old video. You're not out of luck. This one board will work exactly the way the other ones do. You just pop it on there, and as far as the uh, wires are concerned, there's no difference 
between this board and this board. But let's say you wanna get in and try a little bit of surface mount and you add the CPLD, you add some resistors, you add some resistor networks, stick a couple of LEDs in there. Well, eventually you wind up with one like this that's already been populating. You see the CPLD under there. Um, and you know, you've got this and all you need is the Raspberry Pi Zero. And so how sweet is that? That's what makes this project so versatile. You want to build your own RGB to HDMI? Build it. You want to pre-buy one from Retro Hack Shack or have PCB Way make them for you? Do that. Uh, you want to do a mix of the two? You do that. And so in this case, again, this one's just set up for IBM type things. So I've got a little bit of prototyping over here. I stuck my buttons on. I've got the LEDs. I've got my connector for CGA, EGA, monochrome, all that kind of stuff, and we're good to go. I only spent the money on the components that I needed. Now, I will tell you, if you don't like surface mount, I did make this version that actually has the PLCC version of it, which um, the problem with this is that I've had a really hard time getting uh, non-fake PLCC chips to populate this with. So uh, I did make a version of it that doesn't have any um, surface mount soldering at all, but I would use this one at your own risk. In general, I'm telling people that this one is the way to go. So I want to show you how this thing works because I think it's pretty sweet. All right, so I'm going to show you how we're going to hook this up. This is one of my favorite computers. This is the Tandy 1000 SX, but this one has a couple of tricks up its sleeves. As you notice, it's got two GoTech drives in here, and that's because it has one of the Apple cards in it. And one of these GoTech drives is for IBM stuff, and the other one will let it run Apple stuff. So as you can see on the back here, we have my homemade volume knob because this thing was loud as frick. And you've got, in this case, a little bit weird, but you've got your Apple card plugging into your monitor here and it's passing through up here. So as far as the computer's concerned, this is just your normal uh, Tandy video output. So I've got my RGB to HDMI and we are going to plug the video card in here just as if we were plugging into any other Tandy and then I'll get the rest set up. All right, so I've connected the power to the Raspberry Pi, I've connected the HDMI to the Raspberry Pi, and one thing I forgot to tell you is that when you look at the board this way, the buttons are set up in a kind of more easy to remember pattern. So we've got up, down, and back, where on this you've got buttons one, two, and three, and I always had a hard time remembering which one was which. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and fire this bad boy up and I'll show you what it does. And as you can see, we have a perfectly clear picture of Police Quest 1 uh, coming out of the Tandy graphics. So there you have it. I hope you find this project as useful as I do. Um, I do want to say if anybody finds a reliable source on the PLCC versions of this CPLD, let me know. Um, I will put the board out there just so other people can mess around with it. But if you order this board, I would plan on using it more as uh, the original board with the original RGB to HDMI. And uh, we'll see if we can get a reliable source for these chips. But otherwise, if you want to make your own, this is the way to go. Um, so I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. And I want to thank you for taking the time to watch it. Have a great day.